Hello, Dominant and Heron. I'm Kreutz, and in today's RAID video, we're going to be talking about shard management. RAID has a plethora of uh, resources to keep track of and spend. Much like energy gems, tokens, or keys, shards are one of the game's myriad currency and arguably the most important. So let's talk about attaining and spending them to maximize game. I've been keeping track of my shard and book uh, gain and spend since July of 2022. So I have nearly a year of data. And uh, whenever I pull shards or book a champion, I go ahead and keep track of that in the spend column. And then on the first of every month, I put my tallies in, um, and then I can calculate the gain by subtracting the spend and the previous month's uh, balance. Uh, and then if I, so I'll give you a moment to look over that. Uh, as you can uh, see, just like visually from month to month, the the gains are are fairly similar. Similar. Uh, I, ha I do have some note keeping errors. Uh, I don't know how I, I messed that up, but yeah, they, these are bad, bad values. So I excluded that from my uh, averages and uh, average deviation, which you can see over here. Uh, boop. All right, so yeah, so you can see on average 97 ancients 29 voids 14 sacreds a month and then for the books 15 rares 43 epics and 21 lego books um and then you can see the average deviations are are pretty low a little higher on the ancients just because the rng is higher on 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 that shard because you can get it from dungeons um and then it's just generally um more available a, as a reward on events and tournaments um, so yeah, it got, I, I do pretty much everything I can in the game. So, um, if you don't, if you don't, um, take every opportunity in, in all asset, uh, facets of the game, then, uh, you, your shard intake might be a, a little less than this, but, um, this is, um, what I, I pull in, uh, on average a month. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, where you can gain these resources. Um, if you want a more in-depth look uh, at the certain values uh, of the different locations, I would suggest checking out Airbad's video um, on the subject of resource management. I'll include it in the uh, in the description, the link to the video. Um, but yeah, so for consistent income, obviously Clan Boss is the best. Um, and if you can hit, you know, Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, and Brutal every single day, um, I was I would suggest highly suggest doing it. You can even get uh, shards from uh, Brutal chests. It's very rare, but um, over time you will increase your your shard intake by by doing that. Uh, let's see. So, and then uh, obviously there's a certain amount of ancients you can get from the market. I think it's about five a month. Um, so you just gotta just gotta go in here occasionally, check it out, try to get those five. Uh, you can also um, make sure you're hitting your arena. Try to get up into gold um, tiers. Here we go. So even if you're in bronze, you've got a chance at the the ancient it's when you get into gold that you have the chance of the the void and then if you're a maniac uh, you can uh, get a, a sacred shard from a platinum but i would highly suggest for your mental health it, as free to play just don't uh get your hopes too high on pvp <laughs> you just it's 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 very hard to compete all right, uh, let's see. And then, oh yeah, of course, the TTA Bazaar. You can go ahead and get an Ancient uh, every um, every week, and then a Void Shard every two weeks. And then um, I've yet, I'm still trying to put, push up for the Romantic missions to get into to gold. Um, but then, yeah, you can get the Sacred. I, I think that's, I'm not sure. I think that's once a month, but uh, either way, uh, next consistent uh income of shards is doom tower you can get uh void shards 
out of the normal side and then hard you can get uh, voids and sacreds and then you can also go to your clan shop and occasionally there will be a void shard that will pop up uh, in, in aid I think it is um, if you've got a surplus of clan gold uh, and you're uh, able to afford it then uh, I would suggest go ahead and picking that up every time it, it pops up and then, what we got next? Oh yeah, of course, events and tournaments, um, they'll pop up uh, regularly for rewards, either as rewards for winning it, or occasionally there'll be in the, uh, the tiers for everyone to uh, go ahead and collect. And then you've got, uh, you've got your weekly ancient, your monthly sacred and void, and then you can also get your uh, an epic and a legendary book uh, if you can uh, do your advanced, all your advanced, you can get that in like, I don't know, what is that? Math is hard on camera. <laughs> yeah, in a certain number of days. Let's see, and then... Oh yeah, and then uh, like I said, ancients you can get from uh, running dungeons. Uh, every, every single is it every single dungeon other than Iron Twins and um, uh, Sand Devil, you can get a ancients potions and in, potions included, which is good. I don't know if you're if you're hitting tournaments, you want you'd rather have the points really, um, as as ancients are. Are really just giving you rares most oft but let's see oh and then uh, so yeah that's uh, pretty much the consistent income that you can expect uh, one-offs that you can get you can get uh, challenge you can get books and shards in here and then uh, if you do your missions uh, you've got consistent amount of words in here and then the big ticket items the sacreds and the four legendary books You've got, uh, oh yeah, the campaign. You've got the, the scrolling rewards underneath for every single difficulty. And then faction wars, same thing. You've got the scrolling. Um, uh, you can see all the, the levels through here. Gives you a, a, a decent amount. And then, uh, let's see, last, oh, and <laughs> very least to uh, most people, I would imagine, is uh, referral program rewards. Uh, it's hard finding people that you know that don't already play the game um, or ha even have an interest in it. I, I don't know anybody <laughs> who plays Raid personally. So these are all me. Uh, I'm close to getting Chronam and my last uh, Sacred. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you get that bit, but it's nothing to scoff at. Six voids and seven sacreds plus those six uh, epic books is, uh, I would say it's worth the effort, but it to eat, everyone's got to make that decision on their own, obviously. That goes for pretty much everything. It's, uh, it's really just figuring out your play style and, and figuring out what makes you happiest in the game. All right, and then, oh, last, let's see, one of the last things, uh, second to last thing I wanted to do is talk about, um, like you hear everyone say, you want to double dip when you're uh, spending resources. So when you're doing a champion chase or a summon rush, um, you, you don't want to pull... Um, more shards than when you when you max out this uh, this column over here on the right. You, you after that last reward is is taken, you ever all the shards that you put in after that are um, taking away from other events that you could be doing guaranteeds, uh, double legos, um, even special path events. Uh, I know that there was one recently that I went ahead and, and pulled uh, Sacreds for because it had a, a good amount of Lego books. So, so you know, law of diminishing returns. Um, once you, I know it's, it's hard to have that restraint 
uh, but uh, as free to play, you're it's going to be nigh on uh, impossible. It's not, really not worth it to try to challenge for the uh, the tournament rewards over here. Once you max out over here, um, then you should go ahead and stop and save those resources to spend elsewhere. All right. So the last thing uh, I wanted to talk about in in regards of uh, spending your shards. Um, it's good to be informed of where you're at in Mercy. Um, obviously, when you get to those Devil Legendary events, it's uh, really only worth it if you hit on a Lego. Um, and if you do, it's it's one of the best uh, events and ways to get Legos in the game. But you need to know your Mercy in order to um, be informed and make a, a, a good decision uh, about that. So. Uh, I would suggest, highly suggest um, tracking your Mercy. I've got a Mercy counter right here on the screen. This is what I use. Uh, if you have suggestions, uh, um, feel free to leave those in the comments. But yeah, so uh, whenever I, I go ahead and pull shards, I put my starting shards in here. And then as I'm pulling, if I get to the end of my shard pulling, or if I hit on a Lego, you stop put that n the number that you see into the end shards and then it gives you the difference the amount of shards that you have pulled to that point and then you'll add that into whichever column that you're pulling so if you're pulling for your sacreds you put it in the yellow box um, if you if you hit the on that Lego and you're continuing pulling then you're gonna have to start over and then put the new number of starting shards in, and then you know just duplicate that process uh, clearing out if you hit on that Lego, the the box, the number in the box that you have up there, because your your counter has then been reset to zero. Um, I will go ahead and put uh, this in in the description as well. Um, feel free to go ahead and take it and have it as your own. This is a Google Sheets, and um, yeah, if if you're on your phone. Um, or if you're, you're, I don't know, press for time or whatever, um, you can always take a screenshot and uh, input data later. Uh, I, I would highly suggest doing that. Uh, it's a pretty simple thing. Just press those buttons on the side of your phone and then, you know, keep on trucking. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that's the, the video. Thank you for watching until the end. Uh, consider doing the YouTube things and, uh. Have a great day. Cheers. The video is over. This is the end screen. You can go now. Bye.